Hello everyone and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of Snowflake Data Cloud Summit here in San Francisco, California. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, sitting alongside co my co-host and analyst, Dave Vellante. Dave, what's really coming through just being here on, on the show floor is the vast ecosystem of partners that, it, that, that Snowflake has. I mean, notwithstanding COVID, because it sort of made it hard to sort of follow the trajectory, but we've seen many companies, Rebecca, start out like Snowflake did with a smaller ecosystem than it grows, and a sign of that growth and, and vibrancy is when the global system integrators get involved because they have such a depth of capabilities within industries and global reach, and that is a sign of momentum. Well, a terrific segue to introduce our next two guests. I'd like to welcome Mukesh Kumar. He is the President, Global Technology at Slalom Consultant. Welcome, Mukesh. Thank you, Rebecca, thank you. And Amy Kotal, she is the head of GSI and America's Alliances at Snowflake. Welcome, Amy. Thanks for having me. Both of your first time on theCUBE, so this is a very exciting, 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 exciting segment. Exciting, stuff. Yeah, so Mukesh, we've had many people from Slalom on the show before, but I'd love you to start by talking a little bit about Slalom Consulting, what you do, and, and where you are. So Slalom is a modern technology firm. By modern, I mean we focus 100% on things that are present and future, uh, and, and we don't focus on the past. Uh, we uh, work very closely with our clients. Our service portfolio is very broad, from strategy to business to technology to AI. So we're end-to-end -end, uh, consulting company that believes in co-creation with our clients. What does that mean? You're not, it means you're not maintaining COBOL code? Is that what, is <laughs> that, that, that's exactly would that be an example? <laughs> yeah, the, the big 500 person teams that are doing ERP implementations, we're not that. What we're really developing solutions with our clients, the, with teams that are very, very nimble, driving outcomes, driving transformations. So, would we, so you would essentially walk away from that job shop type of business and say, right. hey, there's other people that are better at, at that than we are. But sometimes those uh, uh, projects are on the fence. Do you, how do you handle that? Do you say, hey, look, there maybe is another way? Yeah. And, and do you have much success with that? I, we do, so listen Dave, that's a fantastic question. I believe Slalom is the most customer obsessed company on the planet. Uh, so as we work with our clients, uh, we really look at how can we best support them, best help them. We don't hire people that have desire to work on legacy COBOL code or uh, things that are 25 years past. What we really look for is how can we still support them through say, developing partnerships with companies that uh, try on, on doing that type of work. So, so we've done a lot of that type of work uh, where we partner and we own the whole transformation, own the whole program on behalf of the client, executing on the more modern pieces and more legacy pieces, really manage on behalf of clients through some of our partnerships we're developing. Thank you, and Rebecca, you know, there's nothing wrong with that sort of legacy code uh, maintenance, but it's just not as interesting for CUBE interviews. No, ind indeed, <laughs> indeed it's not. But, but you're here to talk about the new Snowflake business unit. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, the impetus for it? Yeah, so uh, Snowflake business is not new for us. Uh, we've been Snowflake's uh, partner of the year for five plus years. Uh, and what we did recently is we created a Snowflake focused business unit. As we, uh, I talked about customer obsession, when customers are coming to us and we're looking at their use cases, they're uh, talking about Snowflake as a platform, as an anchor, as a starting point, we are seeing that Snowflake's value and our values are aligned in terms of customer obsession. Uh, it, it is a no-brainer for us to create a focused team with the depth of expertise our clients need and desire. So, so that's the impetus behind us standing up that uh, business unit. You know, Amy, I was walking over here through the industry yes. section, and I remember when you guys sort of really started to focus on different industries. I saw manufacturing and entertainment and media, et cetera. Financial services obviously has been a big one. Mm -hmm. Can you describe that sort of evolution of Snowflake and, and how you've come to this point and, and, and where you're headed? Sure, sure. So I think industry is kind of how we're going to market now, and you really see that obviously physically instantiated here in the booths and in our in our village, our vertical village. Right. But really, in terms of our how our teams are organized, we're really taking 
an industry first approach, which is we need to be able to speak the language of our customers. And so we count on partners like Slalom, who is excellent at this, um, to really translate our technology into industry specific use cases. And I think you know we see Slalom across all industries, financial services for sure, um, healthcare life sciences, um, really media and entertainment though is a strength as well. In fact, they run, won the uh, Partner of the Year Award for our media and entertainment industry. And they really are a partner that leads industry first. And so our go to market is about um, not only uh, industry specific use cases, but industry solutions that uh, we invest jointly in with our partners to build. Those can be toolkits or accelerators, but sometimes they're full-blown industry applications, right? And so we have a whole set of marketplace um, and product partners that are building industry-specific solutions that augment what our services partners do. So what were you doing with AI before the AI heard around the world? <laughs> and, and, and how has that evolved and, and what are some of the more interesting activities going on today? So we've always had strong AI practice. We were um, focused on a lot of what technology could provide uh, before generative AI, a lot of use cases around sort of uh, risk analysis, identification, um, uh, recommendation engines, and things like that. With Gen AI, uh, the whole new landscape opened up, as you know. So when Gen AI's with Open AI's announcements, et cetera, uh, came out, uh, our clients were confused. They were, they were thinking, okay, what do we do with this? So we uh, ran a, a very targeted uh, program, we called it Project 1K, where we created 1,000 demos for 100 clients in 100 days to show them what Gen AI could do. You can talk till the cows come home and not be able to explain to somebody who's new to generative AI, especially a year ago, but when you show them to say, you can do this, that was a game changer. Now obviously a lot of our clients, most of our clients understand the power of generative AI and, and now our focus is on how do you provide business value? What use cases are investable? How do you really organize your team and create that flywheel effect? How do you uh, create the data readiness in your organization? Uh, now so our next program is we're calling Project 10 billion is to bring $10 billion of investable uh, use cases, the value to our clients in the uh, next six months. I love this conversation, because yeah, yeah. right now it's like ROI is elusive a little yeah, bit in, yeah. in enterprise anyway, not in consumer. Selling ads, you're in good shape. So what was those thousand projects like? Was it a lot of, you doing a lot of rag, um, sort of fun demos? you know, maybe orchestration. Can you describe sort of what that portfolio looked like? Yeah, the, the portfolio really was a spectrum. Uh, but I would say most of the use cases was taking a business problem and really uh, identifying how do you apply generative AI. I'll give you an example or two. Uh, how do you use Gen AI in customer service scenario? What is it ready for and what is it not ready for? How can you help a customer service agent with this new generative AI. So, so, so that was uh, one example. Intelligent search, um, uh, I won't name the client, but a, a client, a cruise uh, company, where you go on their website, you're looking for uh, cruise options, and there's just so many options that customers got lost, and if you could have the power of generative AI, really do that search for you, where you say, I want to go on a vacation this summer, my budget is $2,000 to $3,000, and I really uh, uh, get seasick, so bigger ships are better for me. Like all of those things, if you can say that in natural language and you get like three options back, that was transformative experience and that particular client actually saw four times the conversion after they put that in production. So, so those are the use cases, but going to the other end of the spectrum, you asked about RAG, et cetera, we have helped uh, clients really set up their uh, Gen AI foundation, really think about is it, because they're large enough client, does it make sense for them to train their own LLM uh, or really use existing LLM and use vector databases? How do you, they combine their own proprietary data with these foundational models? So, so there were those uh, proof of concepts as well. You must be loving this conversation. I do. Right, yeah. because this I mean, this just, this just feeds right into your Gen AI, Gen AI strategy. A lot of the stuff you guys announced today 
you know, dovetails nicely and makes your life easier that you don't have to do all that heavy lifting anymore yeah. and just up the stack. I mean, wonder if you could comment. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I think it was really clear with what Mukesh said that they've always taken an AI first mm -hmm. approach and we've seen an incredible amount of investment that they're making with us around um, helping clients advance in their journey with Snowflake and really taking advantage of the data as a platform and being able to build the house of AI on top and we are actually investing, co-investing in um, some solutions that they're building that are going to uh, showcase Cortex and our Arctic LLM and a couple other parts of our generative AI offerings to um, take out to our clients. And one of them is around helping state agencies actually place folks who are experiencing homelessness. And so we're seeing a lot of traction in the public, spe public sector space. Um, and so I think partners like Slalom and, and Slalom specifically are really you know, diving in to our innovation. It's moving so fast, but they're getting in with us when our products are still in private preview or public preview and really testing it and trying it out with clients and giving us feedback along the way. And they're really helping make sure we launch GA with really durable, great products. So hats off to Slalom, thank you. I'm really fascinated to hear this because it really is about this cultural fit between Slalom and Snowflake in terms of this customer-centric yeah. focus and also the idea that experimentation and letting people to get to play with this stuff to really understand, number one, how it works, and two, how powerful it can be. Can you talk a little bit about the ways in which you work together giving each other feedback yeah. along the way uh, to make sure that this partnership is a success and that you both do continue to invest resources and, and time and effort into it. Sure, uh, I'll start, Amy. Yeah, and, uh, sure, please go. So uh, we at Slalom have this uh, concept of relentless focus on teams and our definition of team is not people that live within Slalom. It is uh, amazing partners like uh, Snowflake that sh have that shared value. It is our customers that we partner with to deliver those solutions. So it's, it's an amazing uh, partnership we have with Snowflake. And uh, we are embarking on this strategic collaboration so we're not uh, collaborating on an ad hoc level. And we have like three key pillars. Uh, Amy, you talked about how do we have uh, slalom uh, people really uh, be trained on private previews, public previews, so our customers are ready to implement those technologies when they come out. So we're co-investing in, in that. We're, we're creating solutions together uh, to, and we're, we're, Snowflake is kindly providing uh, funding for customers where they're stuck, they don't know what to do to really get to that answer, and, and then they can be on the, that journey. So I'm, I'm really grateful for the partnership, Amy, thank you. Same, thank you, and I think our, this collaboration agreement is really just formalizing a lot of what our partnership has already been about, which is jointly investing to make sure customers are taking advantage of all of Snowflake's offerings. And so putting this uh, collaboration agreement in place and, and really formalizing it around these areas of the training, investment, the, the um, innovation, and the, the asset building or the solution building, I think is really going to just take our partnership to the next level. The pace is obvious. We always talk about how fast the pace is. We, yes. We really, in, in our industry, have never seen this before, but so it's a hard question to, to answer in the sense that, uh, what do you want to be able to say, you know, next year, you know, based on sort of the roadmap that you have together and the thing your your, your priorities, which are probably going to change next week. But, yeah. But, but given where they are today, coming out of Snowflake Summit, what are your priorities? I, I believe Snowflake is one of the most innovative companies on planet. So it is, uh, like I. Uh, uh, tuned into announcements today, you probably saw those too. Oh, yeah. It's just amazing the rate at which uh, Snowflake is in innovating. And what I would uh, be proud to be able to say that uh, Slalom is uh, Snowflake's most innovative partner. We are in lockstep with each other, driving real customer value. You can do a lot of experimentation, lot, create a lot of toys that go nowhere, but if you're driving real customer value, providing uh, improving human lives, providing that cost advantage, competitive advantages to enterprises, that's what will make me proud. I'd love to be standing here next year on stage with Mukesh showcasing a real example, right, where you've done exactly what you shared um, and then doing it at scale, right? So, um, Solom's a great partner and they will be with us, I know we will, um, next year. 
Yeah, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out because I think enterprises, I would say, are, I always say, hitting a lot of singles right now with AI, a lot of experimentation going on. Some of the really big, hard to solve problems, it feels like it's going to take a while, but who knows at this pace that we're going. You know. yeah, yeah, I agree. I would say good 50 to 70% of the client uh, I talk to, you said it very well, that they are trying to figure out how do they go from singles to really turning that into a flying wheel, a machine, where they have a way of uh, prioritizing the use cases grounded in ROI. They need to figure out what is the right structure for it. How do they really think about uh, safety and trust, because there's tons of risk associated, and, and Snowflake has that trust and safety built into the platform. So like we're really helping our clients figure that out to, to just really accelerate their uh, adoption of uh, AI and generative AI. Right, and the Mike Scarpellis of the world aren't just going to open up the checkbook and say, here you go, yeah. you know, let's, it, let's get you know, a one in 10 hit rate. No, they're going to want a business case and exactly. they're going to want a high probability. And, and it's, it, it's, like I said, it's easy in consumer. If you're Facebook, you're going to sell more ads. Yeah. I get it. But those enterprise use cases, are, there's dozens and thousands and hundreds, right? But exactly. Well, I think that's why we're talking about this is kind of the enterprise AI era, right. and that Snowflake as a platform being easy, efficient, and trusted is really going to be a platform that customers can really build the house of AI on top of, right? So, you know, I, 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 we hear there's you know risk and you know maybe has some hesitation at times and really going kind of full full speed ahead, but I think Snowflake's the platform to do it with because of our inherent security and governance models and the, really this trusted nature of our platform that customers have relied on for years in the data space that they can now rely on in the AI space. Yeah, the early days of big data, you saw a lot of shadow big data and nobody was even thinking about governance back then. Yeah. And then, then a couple years later, somebody said, well, wait a minute, we better reel this stuff in. That's really not happening today. There might be some experiments going on you know, outside of the purview of legal and compliance, but organizations are much more focused on the risks, and so they do need a, a partner like Snowflake and, and Slalom to help hold their hand through that. And, uh, but that's where, that's table stakes. The innovation on top of that is what's really exciting. That tens of billions of dollars of value got my attention. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, that, 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 that's where the real business is and real human impact is. I mean, we are really passionate about uh, together on what is the impact on customers' customers. So it's one thing to, for you to be our customers and knowing about you want to increase efficiency by X percent, Y percent, but what is the impact? How much time are we saying our customers' customers uh, sifting through that mountains of data that is presented to them, those options and choices, and really making their, putting the smile on their face through those experiences, that, that just keeps me going every day. Well, a terrific note to end on. Mukesh and Amy, thank you both so much for coming on theCUBE, your first time, well done. Thanks so much. I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of Snowflake's Data Cloud Summit. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.